Good morning children. We are on to the next lecture on alkenes and in today's session I will be completing anti-Markovnikov's rule. That is also called as peroxide effect, Karaj effect and it is applicable only for addition of HBr to unsymmetrical alkenes. Right. Uh, un unsymmetrical alkenes means suppose I write CH3 CH double bond CH2. If you find that the HBr is added in the presence of peroxide, which peroxide you take? Benzoyl peroxide. This is benzoyl group C6H5CO group benzoyl peroxide. Right. So in the presence of this benzoyl peroxide if they write down HBr addition then it will go against Markovnikov's rule. That means the negative part will add on to the carbon atom having more number of hydrogens and the positive part on the carbon having less number of hydrogen. So what product you will get in this case is the CH2, CH2 and Br. That means you will get the main product as 1-bromopropane. Had it been just HBr addition without peroxide mention, then it would have followed Markovnikov's rule. Then it would have followed Markovnikov. If it is given in the presence of peroxide, then only it is anti-Markovnikov's rule. Okay, and it is only applicable for the addition of HBr, not for Hi and HCl. Okay, even, even for HF it is not possible. Now, why it is not possible for them? That we will discuss first. Now, the answer to this is HF and HCl. The bonds are strong. The bonds are strong. So, when you will study the mechanism of this, uh, you know, anti markonikov that is peroxide effect, you will find that the HBr is breaking and it is giving, you know, free radical. And that bond can break faster because bromine is larger, the bond will break faster. Whereas here, HF and HCl, fluorine and chlorine, both are smaller in size. So, when both are smaller, the energy is required to break the bond. That means, we can say bonds are strong. Bonds are strong. Which bonds are we talking about? HF and HCl bond. Okay, so more energy will be required. Energy is required to break the bond. It is required to, to break the bond. That means we can say the formation of the free radicals that is in the propagation step we are going to study in their mechanism. This becomes endothermic. This becomes endothermic. So this reaction is not possible for HF and HCl. So more energy is required to break the bond between HF and HCl because fluorine and chlorine are smaller in size. Then what about HI? It is not the anti markovnikov rule is not applicable for HI also. Iodine is quite large in size. Then this breaks. This breaks and it forms H radical, free radical and iodine free radical. It will be formed. But this iodine free radical which is formed is so reactive that it combines with itself and it results in the formation of iodine. So it is forming I2. So rather than carrying out the halogen, I mean, yeah, addition reaction in case of the alkenes, it starts adding on its own and it forms iodine molecule. Therefore, with I2 also, it is not possible. So, this is a reason question asked that anti markovnikovs rule is only applicable for the addition of HBr, not for HF, HCl and HI. Why? So, this is how you are going to explain it. Right? Now, let us see what is the mechanism for the reaction. At times, the, you know, you can be asked to write down the mechanism itself if it is a subjective paper. Right? Else, mechanisms are very important to understand what is actually happening. You know, to answer some multiple choice questions, it's very, very important. Now, the first step in the mechanism is the chain initiation step. The chain initiation step. 
Now what happens in the initiation step? We, I just told you here that it is carried out in the presence of per peroxide, benzoyl peroxide. The benzoyl peroxide we will open up and write C6H5CO. This is a peroxide linkage and then CO C6H5. This part is referred to as benzoyl. So this is benzoyl and between them OO single bond linkage. This is said to be peroxide linkage. So benzoyl peroxide. Now what happens is this single bond is there between the two oxygen atoms. This undergoes homolytic fission. Homolytic fission means the bond will break symmetrically. When it breaks symmetrically, each of the oxygen atom gets one electron of the bond. That means we can say it is resulting in the formation of two molecules of C6H5COO dot. That is C6H5CO another O and dot. That is a free radical is formed. Till, till here it, I think it is clear. Now this product which is formed over here that is C6H5COO this bond, this uh, molecule, this free radical which is formed will now again break. This is a free radical here. This was one electron we have marked over here. So now the bond breaks from this, this position. This is again a homolytic. Here we can write down the first, we have first breaking was homolytic fission. Homolytic fission occurs. Homolytic fission means symmetrical breaking. Even here it is homolytic fission. So what happens? This bond between the two, how it is going to break is this phenyl will get one electron of the bond. Another electron of the bond will go here and this odd electron will come here. That means to make a bond between this carbon and oxygen, one free electron is coming this side and another electron from here it is coming. So what product are you getting? This one homolytic fission say the bond broke and one electron had gone to phenyl. So you are getting C6H5 free radical. Apart from that you are getting carbon dioxide COO because one electron another electron it will form carbon dioxide. That means you were getting here two of this, two of this and two of this because there were two such radicals. Now this free radical which is formed, this is still initiation going on. So this phenyl free radical which was generated, now it combines with HBr, with HBr and again this bond will break. This bond is there between the two, it is going to break. How? This uh, electron from here is, you know, given to this one H. So H goes away. It takes one electron, another electron is taken by this Br. That means this bond will break symmetrically. One electron is taken by Br, another electron is taken by hydrogen. So what you are getting, this is now H has gone there with one electron of it. So you will get C6H6 plus Br free radical is generated. You get the Br free radical. Now this Br free radical which is formed, goes to the next step that is chain propagation propagation means now it is going to continue the reaction it will now go and attack the alkene what was the alkene we took it was unsymmetrical alkene that is propene now this propene will be attacked by the br free radical which was generated in this reaction right now what happens is this bond is there between carbon and uh, carbon, the, the pi bond, because pi bond can break faster, this Br has to take electron. This Br can attack in two different ways. One, this Br can attack here. I mean, this bond will break first. Either it may go this side or it may go this side. No, this bond will break as such only first. So, this will go here or here. Right? So, homolytic fission occurs. This bond one electron goes this side, another electron goes this side. So it will break, this bond will break symmetrically. This pi bond between two carbon atoms will break symmetrically. Each carbon atom gets one one electron. And now this Br has to see where it should go. It can go at this carbon, 
if the br go if this br goes at this carbon let me write down that product if this br along with electron goes to this carbon then center carbon so you will have ch3 ch you will have br here and one odd electron has gone this side that means you will get this ch2 and a free radical now i am drawing where br attaches at this carbon when it attaches here at this carbon what you will have is ch3 ch ch2 okay and br here you will get a free radical this side if it is the first case it has formed 1 degree free radical if it has jo joined by this way it has formed 2 degree free radical which is more stable obviously the 2 degree is more stable now this 2 degree will now continue that means ch3 ch ch2 br now whatever product is formed this one now will again combine with another hbr this is more stable product the lower one is more stable so this is only going to carry out the further reaction not the first one now again it will be attacking another hbr molecule so what will happen now this bond again will break symmetrically this bond will break so one of the h will go here and the another br radical will be generated so what you got now you got ch3 ch2 ch2 and br that means one bromopropane is the major product obtained these two steps are clear now moving on to the last step that is termination that is termination in termination whatever ions are left over free radicals are left over they will combine in case you have two br free radicals left over they will combine and form br2 if you are having this ch3 ch ch2 br this free radical left over then it can combine with another br free radical and it can result in the formation of ch3 ch ch2 br and one br may come here that means another br may attack here so it can happen or another possibility is this this radical which was formed here that is ch3 ch ch2 br this was a free radical it combines the another possibility is that it combines with another such free radical the same free radical when it may combine with the same such free radical they may form a bond like this when they may form a bond means you may get like this ch3 ch ch ch3 ch2 br ch2 br ah oh, sorry it was here you can just see it was hidden just see this part uh one possibility was this where the two brs can combine and form br2 the second possibility is that uh, you know the stable free radical which was formed may combine with one more free radical and form a dibromo derivative or the third possibility is this stable free radical which was formed two such stable free radicals may combine with each other and may result in the formation of you know a lengthier uh, halo products okay so with this i have completed that anti markovnikov's rule in the next video i will be covering the remaining reactions of alkenes thank you